What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and today we're gonna to be having a look at a new plugin, or I should say newer plugin, from XLN Audio called Addictive Trigger. So for those of you who are not familiar with Addictive Trigger, it's a type of plugin that allows you to do drum or sample enhancement or sample replacement specifically to do with drums. And the cool thing about this plugin is it does so much more than just allow you to basically, you know, trigger generate triggers from pre-existing audio material and then generate MIDI triggers for it. There's so much stuff under the hood here and we're going to get into that in a second. So first things first, let's just go ahead. I'm going to turn this off. Actually, we'll just go ahead and remove this for a second. Let's have a quick listen to what we're going to be working with here. We've got some acoustic drum tracks and just as a side note here, I've actually uh, sampled these. I've actually chopped these all up and I've quantized them to the grid and I've done some manual editing here so that these guys are sitting nice and tight against the grid and, and uh, we've just corrected any timing differences that we have with these. So let's go back and let's just go ahead and group those again. So let's have a quick listen from the top. I'm using the exact same files that Paul was using in his video using Slate Trigger. Okay, so decent sounding kit, you know, um, but not a lot of character and definitely would love to get a little bit more oomph out of that kick. So let's just go ahead and listen to everything really quickly. There's my kick. Let's listen to the snare. The snare sounds great, but not a lot of character, not a lot of energy, but it's well recorded. Bottom sounds like the bottom. Let's listen to the overheads. And lastly, the room. Okay, so you get an idea of what this kit sounds like. So what I wanna do here is essentially the same thing Paul did. The kick, I really feel like my gut's telling me we need to replace that all together. But I think the snare is very usable as a starting point. And I think rather than replacing, we're just gonna enhance that. So enough talking, let's just go ahead and start and get to work. Now the first thing is XLN Audio recommends changing this from mono on mono tracks, so just change to stereo track. So because we can do that so easily in Studio One, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that first. Next up, let's just pull up Addictive Trigger. I'm using the VST version here. And what I'm gonna do is just to keep this simple, I'm just gonna go with whatever comes up for the factory default here. So let's go ahead and solve this out. First thing that we need to do is we need to just adjust our threshold and I'm going to adjust my input gain and sensitivity so that we get the triggers working properly. And what I think I'll do is to start off with, let's just listen to the source. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to bring this input gain up so that I'm going to get a little bit more juice out of this, bring it up to somewhere about there. Now I can just dial this up. And let's just adjust our sensitivity and our threshold. Okay, and let me just zero this back out. Okay, so we got our basic kick sound working there. And what I want to do is really quickly, I just want to go over everything that you can do with this plugin, because like I said, it's so much more than just adding triggers and allowing you to trigger samples. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to select this kick tab over here. You can see we have all these different options here. We can adjust between the kick beater being in the front beater front over here. We can adjust the pitch. We have a tone designer here, response, we can add compression and distortion. We've got an EQ, so for example, I wanna beef up the bottom end of this. Bring up some top end maybe, get a lot of snap to that. And then this is my personal favorite, the shaper here. We've got a transient designer. And of course, this is something that I would be doing in the track. So what I'm gonna do here is instead of just soloing this out, I'm gonna play this in context with the drums and let's find something that works here. And I'll probably bring one down my VCA a little bit so we give ourselves a little bit more headroom. Actually sounds pretty good. 
And we've got these send effects too. We can solo out this track again. So this is a blend between the two. What I want to do is I just want to solo this out. Now we're just listening to this. We've got two different effects that we can put in. We can dial up our decay. Bring it back. So there's tons of options to be able to tailor this sound, we, not just about loading the kicks. And we also have a, a bunch of different kicks that it comes with. So we can choose between all these different kicks here and I have all these different choices here. And like I said, they all sound great. And then even if they don't sound the way that you want them to, it's so easy to just come in here underneath the hood and make adjustments to get these to sit perfectly with the track. So we've taken it from here in context. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've got that done, what I want to do here is I want to move on to the snare. So I'm going to go over to the snare track and we're going to do the same thing. Addictive trigger. Again, we're just going to go with whatever came up for the factory default. And let's see how this did in terms of being able to detect everything. Actually did a really good job. Let's bring this up a bit. Right off the bat, I can tell. Let's just kill our effects for a sec. Here's another cool thing. We have overhead, room, and bus that we can add to the equation. So here's the snare just on its own. Of course, we can go in here. There's our bottom, there's our top. We can take compression, noise, our pitch. get it to sit exactly how we need it to. And of course, my favorite is the shaper. And let's actually really quickly, let's listen to these. This is the overheads. Room. Can bring down the levels and our bus. So that's just awesome. Let's listen to that in the track. And what I'm going to do is, like I said, I like the sound of the snare. And I'm gonna just start bringing this in until it starts to get a little bit more thwack. Right there. You can hear that. There's without it. Bring it in. And now I'm just gonna just try this out really quickly. Let's solo this for a second and let's try adding in some of these effects and see how they sound. Solo out addictive trigger. Can open up the send effects. Let's enable the send, send effects too. Bring down the decay. That probably sits a little bit better. So what I love about this is it's not blatantly obvious that we're using sample replacement or sample enhancement. It's blending well and it's gelling really well with the track. Now I wanna show you one more cool thing before we go here. If I hop back into the trigger mode, let's hop to the beginning of my loop selection. I want you to keep your eye on this area here. So I'm gonna play from the top and I'm gonna let this go through all the way. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna solo out the addictive trigger, which is just the uh, process sound, which we're getting from Addictive Trigger. So have a look at these dots here that are being created as the file is playing. Okay, so now that that's done here, you'll notice that we have, you know, these are the MIDI triggers. So if I click this export tab, you notice here that I've got a couple different options. So one option I have here is merge tracks. So if I was running, you know, three or four or five different instances of addictive trigger, 
I could merge all the tracks together and I could get the, the triggers from the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, the toms, whatever. I could merge them all together into one MIDI plugin. Now, the other cool thing you notice here is the map preset. So if I click over here, I've got Addictive Drums 2, I've got General MIDI, I've got BFD, TuneTrack Easy Drummer, TuneTrack Superior Drummer, and Steven Slate Drums. So if you just, you know, you have one of these other drum VSTs over here and you're really comfortable with the sounds and you've invested in sample packs, you can simply use Addictive Trigger just to generate your MIDI triggers very easily and then you can choose one of these mapping presets. So for example, I could go ahead right now and choose Tune Track Easy Drummer. Now I've loaded that. Let's go ahead and close this. Now what you'll notice here is the minute I click this, you get this plus icon and now I can drag this into my actual session. So what I can do is I'll just wait, drag it right at the perfect spot here. And now I have this over here and then I can just snap this right to the beginning. And now what I can do is let's just go ahead and work with this for a second and let's close this plugin. I'm going to open up my instruments over here and I could go ahead and drag in easy drummer. And now it's loading the basic kit. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be triggering from the drag and drop MIDI. I can now trigger another sample from Easy Drummer. So for instance, we've got this snare. And what I can do is just double click and I just want to select all of these. And let's just make the velocity 127. And now I can go back to the beginning here and let's have a listen to this now. I'm just going to solo this out. Actually, let's bring the kick in with it. So that's coming from Easy Drummer. Here's my snare track coming from Addictive, which is a mix between both of them. Can dial that up a little bit. In context, bring this down. Now I can just blend in my other snare. So that's a really awesome feature that they allow you to do that. So then what I would basically do here is I could just create an audio track and then I could just do a drag and drop with this new 3.2 workflow that we have to render down that track very, very quickly. And then I'll just go ahead and I'll get rid of this easy drummer track over here. So now we've got another track that was generated from Easy Drummer, which is our track 14 over here. And then the really cool thing that we can do here is if we want to leave this as a plugin, we can just leave that as a plugin. Or if we wanted to actually render this down, if I wanted to take my kick or my snare over here, I could simply just select this track, solo it out, and use my export stems option. So I could come into tracks over here, my PZM kick, and I just want to make sure that this is going to import back into the track. I could go ahead and click OK. And now it's just going to go ahead and it's just going to bounce out this file and render in this information here. And now I've got my kick drum sample. So essentially what I could do is I could just mute this, no longer need it. And now I have this. I can just hide this track over here. And we can go back to the top and listen again. And then of course, I have my other track. Can make adjustments to this. So that's Addictive Trigger from XLN Audio. Extremely powerful plugin. Not only does it give you the ability to work as a, you know, to trigger different samples and to be able to quickly replace things, but you have so much control where you can go underneath the hood with these samples and really get into things like shaping, compression, mic placement, EQ, transient shaper, tuner, tone designer. Not to mention we can choose between all these different types of snare drums or all these different types of kicks and they all sound great. 
So that's why I'm going to be awarding Addictive Trigger by XLN Audio. I'm going to be awarding it Editor's Choice because I think if you're the type of person that needs to do drum replacement or does this regularly in your workflow or when mixing, you cannot go wrong with this plugin. It is absolutely incredible. Just well laid out, brilliant design, and it's so powerful once you get used to what it can do. And I haven't even really scratched the surface, to be honest with you. So brilliant job, guys. Excellent audio, addictive trigger, two thumbs up for me, editor's choice. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.